Hello, welcome back to chapter 9, section 7, solving quadratic equations using square roots. I am doing the guided practice problems that are just like the homework problems. These are found on page 639 if you're using a real textbook or if you're using the PDF in, the, in Schoology that I posted. You can slide to page 54 to see what they are. And we're going to do problems 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I need this. All right, so I'll have that nearby. Let's look at problem number one. I have x to the second power equals 225. I don't have to work backwards or do anything silly with it or anything. I'm going to take the square root, take the square root. Don't forget I get two solutions and I get x equals, no, I know what it is because I've done it a lot and you will too. I forgot that I need to show you this. 225, that's 15 to the second power equals 225. So this is positive 15 and negative 15. And if you want to write x equals 15, x equals negative 15, that's actually better. Problem number two, I have x to the second power equals 49. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget that you get two of them. I get x equals... Again, I was going to write it, 49, I get 7 to the second power equals 49. So this is positive 7 and negative 7. And you're probably wondering, is that all there is to that? Yep, that's all there is to it. All right, let's look at problem number 3. I have x to the second power equals negative 100. I gave myself some space because I'm going to need a square root, and I'm going to need to put a plus or minus in there. When I take the square root of a negative number, you just say no real solution. And of course that implies that there is a solution that our vocabulary fails us. We say it's not real. And that's true. We'll get to that later. Number four, x to the second power equals 400. Take the square root. Don't forget the plus or minus. Try to make that a little clear. My marker is getting a little, uh, a little blunt. All right, I get x equals plus or minus. What's the square root of 400? Let's look at our list. 400 is right here. So that would be 20. And you can write x equals 20, x equals negative 20, if you want to write it that way. For number five, Notice that all the other problems, I have x to the second power on the left side. That's, that, that's the proper way of saying it. You would say, like, if you're solving, you say x equals 20. You don't say 20 equals x. Mathematically, they mean the same thing, and that's kind of why they threw this in there. But we just want to be able to, like, do things with a um, proper language way of doing it. So I'm going to turn it around and get x to the second power equals negative 25. And I can kind of see where this one's going. Take, if I take the square root, I'm going, to I'm going to try to take the square root of a negative number one more time. No real solutions. So just to be clear, if you have a negative number under the square root, as a matter of fact, let's, 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 let me show you something. I'm going to show you why you're smarter than your calculator. If I do second square root 25, square root of 25. That equals 5. We knew that, okay? But if I do second square root of negative 25, it says, nope, can't do it. You have a non-real answer. The calculator does not understand what's happening. So it says you got two options. You, you can bail out of it and quit. We're just going to quit. Or if you made a mistake and you want to go back and fix it, your mistake is right here. Don't put that in there, okay? But guess what? Later, later in Algebra 2, we're going to show you what that actually is. And it, it seems almost like a cop-out when I do it, but it actually is very, very important. It's an important idea. Okay, number six. Again, I'm going to turn it around. I get x squared equals 36. Take the square root of both sides, and don't forget the plus or minus. Where's my 36 on my list? It's right here. So this is x equals positive 6 or negative 6. 
and again you know sometimes I'm sometimes I'm not sure if you're if like when I say stuff if everyone catches what I say you can write it this way or you can write it this way this way is better if I separate both of them but like like I said math people are lazy so they yeah, just put a plus or minus in front of it the only thing is that this causes some conceptual problems that we may run into later down the line but for now it'll be okay